Hey friends, if you're looking for quick tips to help you jumpstart your week, you are in the right place. I'm Lori Palau, host of the popular weekly podcast, Organized Life, founder of Simply Be Organized. And every Monday, I am here to bring you a quick organizing tip in under 15 minutes. All you have to do is click the subscribe or follow button wherever you're listening, and let's get started. Everybody, and welcome to today's episode of This Organized Life. This is our tip of the week. And if you're listening to this in real time, happy June, everybody. I am so excited because I love summer. Um, I love the beginning of summer because I know that I've got the next eight, 10 weeks to just kind of take things down a notch. Um, for some of you, summer can be stressful, um, especially if you've got young kids at home and you're trying to figure out a lot of your planning and logistics. And so today's tip is all about planning out your summer schedule. So depending on where, what season of life you are in, this may be something that there's a lot of change or it might not be, you know, anything that is super significant. But I remember vividly when my kids were younger, there were so many moving parts um, that I would stress as the school year was wrapping up because, you know, we were in our routine, even if things were a little bit nutty, we were in our routine. We had school lunches made, we had wake up time, we had bedtime. Um, I knew what my work day was while my kids were in school. Um, I knew when the buses were coming and dropping off or when I had to pick them up from things. And then all of a sudden summer kicks in and everything goes sideways. We've got one kid running in this direction, another kid running in that direction. Sometimes the kids are home. Sometimes they're not home. And I'm trying to figure out how I can, it's like hurting cats, people. I don't know if you've ever felt like that. And on top of it, I still had my regular work obligations that I had for my clients or my boss or whatever I was doing. And I also had all of the regular household things that still needed to get done, like laundry and dishes and meal planning and all of that stuff. So my tip today is I want you to carve out a little bit of time. You could do it in the morning when you're having a cup of coffee. You could do it in the evening. Figure out what works for you. I want you to plan out your schedule specifically. And I don't mean you have to plan every single little minutia, but there's a couple of key areas that I want you to think about. I want you to think about, first of all, what is going to change? Like, what are the things in your life, in your routine that are going to be impacted with this shift? And again, you might be listening. You might be like, I have grown kids or my kids are kind of on their own and doesn't really affect me that much. That's great. But if you're somebody that's got a lot of moving parts, this can be a really big um, disruptor in your life for this coming season. So just really, first of all, just let's acknowledge and write down what are the things that are going to be changing. Second of all, um, I want you to look at your calendar over the next couple of months, right? So we're basically talking like June, July, August. Are you planning any trips? And if you are, going away, whether it's for a weekend, for an extended trip, whatever it is, what are the things in your house that still need attention? For example, do you need somebody to pick up your mail or do you need to stop your mail for, you know, temporarily? Do you need somebody to come and water your flowers while you're away or your lawn? Or do you need somebody to walk your dog or do you need to, um, you know, board schedule, you know, get your, your dogs, uh, boarded. Do you need to, or, you know, if you have cats, if you're a cat person, you know, do you need somebody to come in and, and help take care of your cat? These are things that you want to be, hopefully you've already thought of, but if you haven't not too late, just sit down and write that out and start to plan. What are those missing pieces that I am going to need to take care of in order for me to, you know, enjoy and be organized and relaxed on my trip. The third thing is I want you to also, as you're kind of planning out the things that are changing, what are, what are the pockets of time that you are actually going to reclaim a little bit? I know for me, um, and I've talked about this before, the one great thing about summer when the kids were younger was I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have to make school lunches every day. So 
think about are there things that in your current routine and schedule that you do all the time and now for a whether it's a short window or extended period you have a little bit of a breather what does that look like um and then on the flip side what are the things that we have to now pack i remember when the girls were little and they started they were doing my kids always did the like day camps like they didn't do any overnight camps and when they were um, going to a couple of day camps, they were swimming. So I had to remember I had to pack um, bathing suits and towels and sunscreen and a change of clothes and all of these other things. So even though maybe lunch was provided, I had to remember I had to do all these other things. So how could I be proactive? And when was I going to do this? Or when was I going to teach my kids how to do this? So whether they're, you know, doing it on their own or you're doing it for them, getting you're getting a handle around all of those um, logistical pieces. And I think it's also important um, as part of kind of that whole organizing your schedule for the summer is having a conversation. If you do have kids at home, especially younger kids, and you're maybe loosening up on their bedtimes, or maybe you're letting them sleep in, but you don't want them sleeping until noon. I, it's really important to sit down. And I'm a big proponent of having that conversation with your kids age appropriately of what time they can go to bed or what time the new bedtime is. And if they are going to sleep in, if they're not going to a camp, you know, are you just letting them sleep till they wake up? Or are you saying, nope, we're going to get up and everybody's got some chores around the house or responsibilities, or we're going to do our summer reading in the morning be really kind of clear about what it is that you want your schedule to look like. Because I always tell people, everyone has a, everyone has a routine. It's either by default or by design. You either have a routine that's crazy and harried because it's not planned out and intentional, but it winds up becoming just like, you know, a, a, a chaos filled, you know, uh, morning or you can have a calm, easy morning because you've planned things. And so I always want you to try to put whatever pieces you can in advance to try to make the day go as smoothly as possible. Obviously, there's always going to be things that come up. But if we are intentional from the get-go, then it minimizes things going sideways you know, and we're at least controlling the parts that we can control. So again, your tip for this week is to sit down with a cup of tea, cup of coffee, glass of wine, whatever it is that you want, and write out kind of your plan for the summer. Um, that's it. So I hope wherever you are, you are um, enjoying some sunshine. And if you have an idea or a topic that you would love us to discuss, please reach out to us. You can either DM us, you can shoot us an email, um, whatever, whatever mode of communication you would like. And of course, if you'd like to be on our Ask an Expert series, we would love to have you answering any question that you have about organizing, about parenting and uh, getting your kids organized, about um, communicating with your spouse, about the Enneagram, any topic that you have. It could be about digital clutter. It could be about physical clutter. It could be about calendar clutter, whatever it looks like. We are here to talk to you about it. So again, we will drop that link in our show notes. So please check it out. Um, we only grow because of your continued listening and support and engagement with our show. So again, on behalf of myself and the entire team here, thank you so much. And I'm Lori Plow. I'll see you next week on another episode of Disorganized Life. Tip of the week. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. And if this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you are listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. 
You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Life Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B, like boy, organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners, and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.